The Science Success Center, with funding from Title V, presents Photosynthesis, a biology workshop. Autotrophs are the producers of the biosphere. Plants are autotrophs in that they make their own food and thus sustain themselves without consuming organic molecules derived from any other organisms. Plant cells capture light energy and convert it to chemical energy. Using this energy, plants make their own organic molecules and are the ultimate source of organic molecules for almost all other organisms. They are often referred to as the producers of the biosphere because they produce its food supply. All organisms that produce organic molecules from inorganic molecules using the energy of light are called photoautotrophs. In this chapter, we focus on photosynthesis in plants, which takes place in chloroplasts. Photosynthesis occurs in chloroplasts found in plant cells. The leaves found on plants contain, in their mesophile, chloroplasts that perform photosynthesis using water and oxygen. A leaf's stoma allows oxygen to leave the plant while simultaneously uptaking carbon dioxide from their surroundings. The chloroplast structure. The chloroplast has an outer and inner membrane to house stroma, a liquid environment found inside all chloroplast. Inside the chloroplast are thylakoids, and a stack of thylakoids is called granum. Plants produce oxygen gas by splitting water. Experiment 1 shows that a tagged oxygen reactant in carbon dioxide only contributes oxygen atoms to glucose and water. Experiment 2 tagged the oxygen found in water reactant and shows that oxygen gas is the only product receiving the tagged oxygen atoms from water, proving that water is giving rise to the oxygen gas used for breathing, not carbon dioxide. Here, the reactant carbon dioxide only contributes to the production of glucose and water, while the water reactant gives rise to all three products, glucose, water, and oxygen. Photosynthesis is a redox process as a cellular respiration. Redox reactions consist of an oxidation process, loss of hydrogen atoms, and a gain of hydrogens, a reduction process. Overview. The two stages of photosynthesis are linked by ATP and NADPH. Stage 1 of photosynthesis is called the light reactions because the sunlight energy is needed. The sunlight is first absorbed by the thylakoids and used to break apart water to make oxygen gas. While the hydrogen atoms from water are transported by NADPH to the chloroplast's stroma. Both NADPH and ATP are used in the Calvin cycle, stage 2 of photosynthesis. The Calvin cycle uses ATP, NADPH, and carbon dioxide to make sugar. Visible radiation drives the light reactions. Sunlight is a type of energy called electromagnetic energy or radiation. An electromagnetic spectrum is the full range of electromagnetic wavelengths from the very short gamma rays to the very long wavelength radio waves. Visible light, the radiation your eyes see as different colors, is only a small fraction of the spectrum. It consists of wavelengths from about 380 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. The distance between the crests of two adjacent waves is called a wavelength. Shorter wavelengths have more energy than longer wavelengths. Light also behaves as discrete packets of energy called photons. A photon is a fixed quantity of light energy, and as you have just learned, the shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy. Interaction of light with a chloroplast. Light absorbing molecules called pigments built into the thylakoid membranes absorb some wavelengths of light and reflect green light. We do not see the absorbed wavelengths, their energy has been absorbed by pigment molecules. What we see when we look at a leaf are the green wavelengths that the pigment transmits and reflects. Chloroplasts also contain a family of pigments called carotenoids, which seem to be used in photoprotection, 
they absorb and dissipate excessive light energy that would otherwise damage chlorophyll. Photosystems capture solar power. A photosystem consists of a number of light harvesting complexes surrounding a reaction center complex. The light harvesting complexes consists of pigment molecules bound to proteins. The reaction center complex contains a pair of chlorophyll A molecules and a molecule called the primary electron acceptor, which is capable of accepting electrons and becoming reduced. Two photosystems connected by an electron transport chain generate ATP and NADPH. In the light reactions, light energy is transformed into the chemical energy of ATP and NADPH. In this process, electrons are moved from water molecules passed from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1. Between the two photosystems, the electrons move down an electron transport chain and provide energy for the synthesis of ATP. A pigment molecule in a light harvesting complex absorbs a photon of light. The energy is passed to other pigment molecules and finally to the reaction center of photosystem 2. This electron is captured by the primary electron acceptor. Water is split and its electrons are supplied one by one, each replacing an electron lost to the primary electron acceptor. The oxygen atom combines with an oxygen atom from another split water molecule to form a molecule of O2. Each photo-excited electron passes from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 by an electron transport chain. The exergonic fall of electrons provides energy for the synthesis of ATP by pumping hydrogen protons across the membrane. Light energy excites an electron of the chlorophyll in the reaction center of photosystem 1. The primary electron center captures the electron and an electron from the bottom of the electron transport chain replaces the lost electron. The excited electron of photosystem 1 is passed through a short electron transport chain to NAD+, reducing it to NADPH. NADPH, ATP, and O2 are the products of the light reactions. Chemiosmosis powers ATP synthesis in the light reactions. Chemiosmosis is also the mechanism that generates ATP and a chloroplast. Recall that the process of chemiosmosis drives ATP synthesis using the potential energy of a concentration gradient of hydrogen ions across a membrane. The gradient is created when an electron transport chain uses the energy released as it passes electrons down the chain to pump hydrogen ions across a membrane. During the electron transport chain, hydrogen ions are pumped across the membrane from the stroma into the thylakoid space. This generates the concentration gradient across the membrane. In photosynthesis, this chemiosmotic production of ATP is called photophosphorylation because the initial energy input is light energy. ATP and NADPH power sugar synthesis in the Calvin cycle. Inputs to this all-important food-making process are carbon dioxide from the air and ATP and NADPH, both generated by the light reactions. Using carbon from CO2, energy from ATP, and high-energy electrons from NADPH, the Calvin cycle constructs an energy-rich 3-carbon sugar, G3P. A plant cell can use G3P to make glucose and other organic molecules as needed. The starting material is a 5-carbon sugar named ribulose biphosphate, RUBP. Carbon fixation. In the carbon fixation step, the enzyme Rubisco attaches carbon dioxide to RUBP. In the next stage, a reduction step, NADPH reduces the organic acid 3PGA to G3P with the assistance of ATP. To make a molecule of G3P, the cycle must incorporate the carbon atoms from molecules of carbon dioxide. Release of one molecule of G3P. For every three carbon dioxide molecules fixed, one G3P molecule leaves the cycle as a product, and the remaining five G3P molecules are rearranged. 
regeneration of RUBP using energy from ATP to regenerate three molecules of RUBP. Note that for the net synthesis of one G3P molecule, the Calvin cycle consumes six ATPs and six NADPH molecules, which were provided by the light reactions. Review. Photosynthesis uses light energy, carbon dioxide, and water to make food molecules. The photosystems transfer photoexcited electrons through electron transport chains, where energy is harvested to make ATP and NADPH. The chloroplasts sugar factory is the Calvin cycle, the second stage of photosynthesis. In the stroma, the enzyme Rubisco combines carbon dioxide with RUBP. ATP and NADPH are used to reduce 3PGA to G3P. Adaptions that save water in hot, dry climates evolved in C4 and CAM plants. Closing stomata on a hot, dry day is an adaption that reduces water loss, but it also prevents carbon dioxide from entering the leaf and oxygen from leaving. Such plants are called C3 plants because the first organic compound produced is the 3 carbon compound 3PGA. Camp plants, these species are adapted to very dry climates. A camp plant conserves water by opening its stomata and admitting carbon dioxide only at night. When carbon dioxide enters the leaves, it is fixed into a 4 carbon compound. The 4 carbon compound in a camp plant banks carbon dioxide at night and releases it to the Calvin cycle during the day. Thank you everyone for watching. Come visit us at the Science Success Center if you have any questions. Good luck on all your studies and tune in for the next workshop.